good morning. I'm James, one of the tech experts from Merlin Loughborough, and today we're going to be putting together a target recurve setup exactly the same as if you'd come in to buy your first bow. Right, we'll start by unboxing our bow. Start with the riser. This is a MyBow Rio riser. In a lovely matte black. Has a few tools and instructions with it as well. Get to the box too. For later. Then we go onto the limbs. A set of MyBow Synergy limbs. They come with little rubber protectors on the, the end so they don't rattle against each other. And then two limbs. And the other item we have here is string. All very important. Right, we're now ready to put our bow together. We'll now assemble the bow. The uh, riser has a dovetail unit in the bottom and the back of the limb has a dovetail on it to fit into that. The bottom limb is marked with a sticker. Sometimes the limbs have lower and upper written on them or top and bottom. The dovetail goes straight into the socket and the U goes around the limb bolt. And the top limb that just drops in in the same way. And now we come to stringing. Right, now we're going to string the bow. Just before we do that, it's worth pointing out that this movement in the limb is perfectly normal. And we'll discuss that in further detail when we talk about tillering, getting the tiller set on the bow correctly. The uh, string has a big loop and a small loop. The big loop goes at the top and slides down the limb. The small loop goes at the bottom, goes onto the limb tip, into the string groove, where it will end up. Then we need a stringer, which has a pocket at one end, which goes on the bottom. And just make sure that's safely in the groove. Drop the pocket on. At the top, there is a saddle, the little rubber non-slip bit on the inside. That goes on the limb below the string. We put our boot on it, pull up, slide the string onto the end of the limb and relax down. If you're struggling, you can put two feet on it, it brings it closer to you. And if you're really struggling, you can tie knots in the stringer to make it shorter. To de-string it, it's the reverse process, boot on the strap, saddle at the top, slide the string down the limb, and then we have one de-strung bow. Have a quick check to make sure that the string is correctly positioned in the string grooves. And we have one strung bow. Now we've got the string on the bow, we're going to check the brace height. That can be measured from the throat of the grip to the string, or from the string to the back of the pressure button. If you have a bow that is over braced, it becomes slower. If you have a bow that is underbraced, it becomes a little bit quicker, but also sounds like a bag of bolts. This is a 68 inch bow, where we'd expect to have a starting brace height that can be tuned later of between eight and a half and eight and three quarters. Uh, this currently has a nine inch brace height, which is a little high. So what we're going to do is take the string off it, uh, take some twists out of the string, and put it back on and recheck. Right, we've taken the string off the bow, we're just going to take some twists out of it to correct the brace height by lengthening the string. Put the back on the bow and restring, and we'll check the measurement again. It is now reading eight and three quarters, which is what we were aiming for. The next job is to set the tiller on the bow. Uh, this is basically a method of measuring how strong each limb is relative to the other. We measure it from where the limb enters the riser to the string and compare the difference between the two. Obviously in this instance the bottom limb is significantly heavier than the top. 
The reason we need to have a little bit of tiller on a target setup is because we shoot one finger above, two below, up here where the arrow is, and the centre of the bow is down at the throat of the grip. So we need to put a little bit of tiller on to account for that. If we were shooting bare bow, with three fingers underneath, we are now pulling in line with the grip, so we would have zero tiller. This bow is currently set at 3 eighths of an inch tiller, which is a little bit high for a, a first setup. We typically like between an eighth and a quarter of an inch of positive tiller, with the bottom limb stronger than the top. The tiller can then be adjusted through tuning at a later date. To adjust the tiller, we need to use the Allen keys that came with the riser. In the case of this rear riser, there's a big Allen key for the limb bolt on the front, and a small Allen key for the locking screw on the back. Before I adjust it, I'm going to take the string off again so that we don't run the risk of damaging the limbs. In this instance, the bottom limb is stronger than the top limb, so we need to put a little bit more poundage onto the top limb. We'll do that by adjusting the tiller bolt and changing the limb angle. This increases the poundage just by a little bit. The side effect of this is you can actually use these limb bolts to change the total poundage of the bow. This is not recommended. The tiller bolt is purely there, as the name suggests, for adjusting tiller. So, what we'll do is we'll loosen the locking screw on the back. Of course we need to take about an eighth of an inch of tiller off. I'm going to tighten that bolt by about half a turn. Nip the tiller bolt back up again. And restring. Now we've done the adjustments, we will just uh, recheck the measurement. We now have a quarter inch of tiller, which is fine for a starting place. At this point it's also worth just uh, double checking that the locking screws are secure because we don't want them vibrating loose while they're being shot. The uh, next job is to check how straight the bow is. She's not hugely critical at the, when you're getting going, but the better you get, the straighter your bow wants to be. Uh, and what we do is we just have a little look down the, down the string, lining it up with the tiller bolts in the, at the bottom and checking that the limb tip is coming straight off the front end. This bow is beautifully straight. I have to do both ends. Uh, so there's no adjustments required on this one. If there was, we utilise our little Allen key again and the screws in the side, loosen off on one side, tighten up on the other to move the limb left and right in its pocket to adjust any slight tolerance anomalies that we have with the limbs. Now we're going to fit the arrow rest. Today we're using a Mybo hot wire rest. Just take him out of his packet. Uh, this is a highly adjustable arrow rest. So the wire will move up and down and in and out. And we shall look at that in a second. We'll just peel the backing off it and we shall apply it to the riser. Drop it down so that the hole lines up with the hole for the pressure button and then apply pressure to it to get it to stick. Uh, we're now going to put the uh, pressure button in. The pressure button is a, a device that allows us to tune the arrows. Uh, it's got a, a spring in it so that applies the pressure to the side of the arrow to correct the archer's paradox and get the best flight possible. That screws into the riser at the pressure button hole, sometimes called a burger hole. And we'll then correct centre shot in a mount. Right, now we're going to set up the centre shot. Before we do that, we need to have a little discussion about arrows. Uh, there is a, a huge range of arrows you can get from very big fat aluminium ones down to little tiny carbon and carbon alleys. Um, selecting the right spine arrow for your bow is very critical and a massive topic which will take some discussion at a later date. For the purposes of this we're going to use a Mybo Flight 
because they are conveniently all the same diameter, no matter what spine they are. So, what we do, we set the arrow onto the string, sit up against the, the pressure button, line the string up down the centre of the riser, and see where the arrow lies relative to the string. We want the arrow to be sat just so that the point is to the left of the string for a right-handed archer, obviously the other way around for a left-hander. This one needs to come out just a tiny little bit, so we shall find my Allen keys. To adjust this, we use the collar on the button. Loosen the collar off. Move it and move the button so that we get the centre shot we desire. Which is there. Tighten the collar back into the bow. Just take that off so I don't stab myself. And then just tighten the collar back up again. Now we've done the left and right adjustments with the pressure button. Uh, we need to do the up and down adjustments to get the arrow to run in the centre of that pressure button. At the moment it's running a little bit low, so what we do is we use the very small Allen key that comes with the arrow rest into the screw at the back, loosen that off, and that frees the wire so that we can move it up, and I'm going to move it out just a little bit so it holds the arrow nicely. I'll just tighten that back up again. And we are done. While we're talking about uh, arrow rests and pressure buttons, we want to discuss how to adjust the pressure of the pressure button. Um, that is done with this little locking screw here. We loosen that off. That means we can adjust the, uh, the plunger itself at the back of the spring, like that. We take pressure off if the arrow is too stiff and put pressure on if the arrow is too weak. You can also take the the button apart and change the spring inside it to give you the best arrow flight possible. Now we've got the arrow and pressure button on, we shall uh, put the knocking point on. So we take our brace light gauge back again, click that onto the string this time and position it on the arrow rest. We have uh, already set the tiller at a quarter inch so we will set the top of the bottom knocking point one quarter inch above square. Take our knock point tying thread, cut our length. We want it to be reasonably long because you want to have something to hold on to to pull the knots tight. Right, so we'll thread it on so that the first knot sits at the quarter inch mark. Just a simple knot. place. This of course, as with everything else, will need tuning out with experience. Pull it nice and tight and get rid of the brace light gauge now in the way. And we just put knots on the top and on the bottom. I like to do six knots, three on the top, three on the bottom. That and give the last one a good hard tug. This material is particularly good because it melts well. So with a lighter, we'll just melt the end off and square it off with the, with the thumb. And the same on the other side. And then we shall put the top knocking point on. Okay, and now for the top knocking point. We'll use an arrow to measure the, the gap required. Uh, we don't want to go right up against the knock because we need a little bit of room for when the bow is drawn back. A tight angle appears there and we don't want the arrow being squ squashed by the knocking points which might lead it to be knocked off the arrow rest. So, same process again. Nice tight knots and again six knots. Here. As you see, we keep the tail nice and long so we've got that something to pull up on. Remove the knock so we don't burn that by mistake. And 
We don't want to take the flame too close to the string because uh, we don't want to melt the serving. Or worse still, set fire to it. One complete knocking point. Right, now we come to attaching the sight to the bow. for a typical intermediate level sight, the Avalon Tech 1, with a carbon extension, the sight block slides up and down the, the front by pressing the silver button, and there's a micro adjust up and down on the top, and a micro adjust left and right of the sight. We remove the sight block from the extension arm, he is going to be Mounted to the side there over those two holes. Inside the bag we have a couple of screws. We locate the bracket over the two holes, put in the screws and tighten up using our Allen keys. Now the block's mounted, we slide the sight into it, secure it at the desired length, and take the Sight pin that slots onto the front and tightens up. Now the uh, sight's mounted on the bow, we can turn the sight pin until we get somewhere close to the centre shot. We typically want the sight pin just to be to the left of the of the string when lining the string up down the centre of the riser. When you're shooting with a sight, if your arrows are going off to the left, you move your sight left, and if they're going low, you move them low, etc, etc. Uh, basically, follow the arrows is the rule. And now we're going to look at stabilisers. Most people, when they're moving to an intermediate bow, will only have a long rod to start with. The mass weight change from a beginner bow to an intermediate bow is quite a lot, so they may want to keep that weight down. The purpose of stabilisation is to provide weight a long way from the bow to give uh, stability so you're able to hold on target easier. A set of stabilisers is typically made up of five components. Extender, which mounts straight into the bow. A V-bar, which then becomes the stabiliser mount where the other stabilisers will mount onto. And that secures into the, the V-bar, into the extender. Mm -hmm. That. You need to just tighten that up a little bit, otherwise they will all move around. The long rod mounts into the front of a V-bar, pointing towards the target. And then we have two side rods that mount to the side of the V-bar, pointing towards the archer. And there we have a complete set of stabilisers attached to the bow. Right, now we've got a full set of stabilisers attached. You check the balance of it. First place is just below the grip. Check the left, right, and side to side balance, as you may be able to see there. It's uh, slightly heavy on the side side, which is not that much of a surprise. And it's currently a little bit top heavy, so we need a bit more weight towards the bottom. We also like to find the centre of gravity going front back and in this instance it's about an inch in front of the throat of the grip which is pretty much perfect so the weight distribution front back is correct we just need a bit more towards the bottom and a bit more on the opposite side to the sight right to correct that slight lean off to one side I'm just going to put a, a weight opposite the sight so we'll take the, the cap weight off put another base weight on and re-secure the cap weight. 
that should then give us a left to right balance. And by doing that, I also seem to have corrected the uh, front uh, up down as well by having a little tiny bit more weight. The last part of a target archer setup is the clicker. It's basically a draw length check and is usually not recommended for someone just coming off a beginner's course, but will be something a coach would suggest you put on six, eight, 12 months after you've started shooting. The uh, first part that I'll do is the clicker extender, which goes in the front of the riser. That came with the riser. And he just screws in. Some bows have a little plate that screw on instead. Today we're just going to use a Imibo Crescent clicker. Take him out of his tube. He screws into one of these two holes on the front, depending on which uh, what length we need. Screw him in my Allen key. And then mounts onto the bow. As your arrow comes through, it'll give a pleasant click. Finally, the, the operation of the clicker, the arrow slides underneath it and onto the arrow rest as normal. As you draw the bow back, the arrow will come along the clicker, put the last little squeeze through, put it through the point through the clicker, at the click, you can let go and release your arrow as normal. The clicker needs to be set up to your draw length and needs to work for you, not against you. It's best to have a coach's hand to, to do that, to make sure that you're still shooting the bow the same way you were after you mount the clicker as you were before. That pretty much concludes the setup of a full Olympic style recurve rig. Happy shooting, goodbye.